Oh, your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will see Of the goodness of God I love you, Lord. 
Oh, your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your head From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God
Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? We are just ready to start. Okay. Cut the music. I want to say a pleasant good afternoon to each one of you. I am very glad to be here this evening. I have this one here. Okay. I need this one too. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I have two mics on, so I hope we wouldn't get a feedback. Okay, good. I want to say, could I take the carry the volume up a little bit? A pleasant good afternoon to each one of you, and I'm glad that we all can gather here this afternoon. We are we gathered here not because of a good occasion, as we all know, but on a sad occasion, nevertheless, we are here. And as I always say, death is a part of life. We all have to go through this, no matter where we are. I would like for you all to stand and let us open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your blessing this morning, this afternoon. Thank you for this day that you have given to us. You said, let us rejoice and be glad in it, dear Father. Almighty God, we are thankful, dear Lord, for life. We are thankful for health and strength, and we are happy to be, Lord, here this afternoon to comfort and to, sh to share, Lord, love and, and prayers with each other, dear God, especially the Daniel family, dear Father. Almighty God, as we begin this time, we pray that your presence will come in this place. Lord, that whatever will be said and done, that you will get the glory and you will get the honor. Father, we bind every evil thing, Lord, right now, every evil force, Lord, that will hinder our service. Father, we ask that your spirit will go forth right now and take charge. Have your way there, God. Bless every heart that is here. Maybe those on the way come and bring them safely. And dear God, we pray for the family right now that during this time of service, as they reflect, Lord, that you will give them, dear God, uh, uh, the strength to endure, a strength, dear Father, that they will be able, dear God, to see what is happening, understand, dear God, and and be very mindful of your love and your grace upon their lives. Bless this afternoon, Lord, friends and families and neighbors and well-wishers. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing this afternoon. And we pray that you will take charge right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Our first song we're going to sing is, is in moments like these. And I think we're going to get it. Hopefully, we're going to get it organized on the... Um, Oh, we're not connected. Brandon. Is this the connection? Yeah. Okay, so we connected. Go in YouTube. Go in. Uh, I'll go in the song. We apologize. Um, going to go in settings. Settings? like these. Sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. 
I lift up my hands to the Lord, singing I love you, Lord, singing I love you, Lord, singing I sing out a song, I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands, I lift up my hands to the Lord. We want to thank God this evening. I probably will need to get the volume up for the audio on these, the psalm, because it's very low. At this time, we are going to have a scripture reading, and we're going to have one of our members of the church to come and do this for us. shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated. I do apologize. I think we want time, but you know, unfortunately, as um, time come along, I come from Diego Martin and it was a little bit hectic for us, but we are glad to be. I am glad to be here. I am Pastor Myra Maria Rampasad. I have with me two members and one just walking. Brother Gavin, if you could come up on this way here. Um, we, we're thanking God that um, and Sister Kamini and her family are part of our church in Diego Martin. And we are so happy that, you know, um, we can be a part of this family. We have been a part of this family for many, many years. And uh, uh, we are so blessed to have such a wonderful family. And also um, to be able to know Mr. Daniel. I call him Daniel, but Rishi Daniel, for most of you who would know. Um, what a wonderful person he was. He you know we have to use things in pa in the past tense because at present you know this is it he has lived his life and he has gone on and uh, daniel was a wonderful man a good husband a good father i must say you know it, it's going to be very difficult for the family and um of my condolences on behalf of faith evangelical and uh, on behalf of the rampasad family 
I bring my condolences to you, company and your family, and that God will bless you all and keep you in these times. Uh, we have all been through things like this. We have all gone through things like this, and it is very difficult for us. Um, it brings back memories to me, a lot of memories. I realized I felt something this morning, and it just flashed back, it just flashed back into my mind about losing my husband also. And um, so I know what it's like. And for those of you who have widows here, might be able to you know, relate to what has happened and, and, and what we experience in here. Anyhow, we, we're going to do a song in the sweet by and by. And um, I try to do the karaoke because our musicians are not here. And um, as you all know, with the COVID going on wrong, a lot of people have been sick. So unfortunately, we couldn't have a whole lot of people come to the service today and our musicians and all of that. But I try to do my best with this karaoke. So we're going to sing in the street by and by. It's in your, it's in your, um, your pamphlet here. We have here. Oh, OK. And you all have to know that some of the beat might be different and um, follow on as we sing. Internet problem. And maybe not all the verses we will sing. In love, fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melody of songs of the blessed And the spirit shall sorrow no more Not a sign for the blessings of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet In the sweet by and by, it's not a lovely song. The bountiful Father above, we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore amen we shall meet on that beautiful shore I am very nervous. I have been 
I've been pastoring for a long time and a little bit nervous today. <laughs> so you all bear with me and um, that we will be able to get this service over and done with. It's a very sad time. It's a very um, emotional time for the family and for us who, and for those of you who have known Daniel. So it's, it's not a very pleasant time and I'm having a very hard time today, somehow or the other. <laughs> But God is good, amen? <laughs> God is good, and I know you understand we are human beings, and, and sometimes we expect the best of everything, but sometimes, you know, we just have to be ourselves, right? And uh, express the way we feel and how we are, um, you know, feeling at this moment. As you all can know, I'm very nervous in my voice. I'm feeling it. I know that is not a good thing and not a very pleasant thing. I have been, you know... For my ministry having too many deaths, too many deaths. And more and more people are passing away and more people are leaving us, family members. And it is getting to be very difficult. And I don't know if at this time that we are thinking carefully about our lives. How precious life is and the breath that we breathe. At this time, we're going to have the eulogy. And uh, I think Samantha is going to come and do that eulogy for us. Oh, you're using the speaker there. Bluetooth.
Bluetooth. I think that's in Rishi's voice that we're going to hear. Good evening everyone, Daddy, today is the hardest day of our lives. I hope you are peaceful and happy up there in heaven. You are the man holding this family together. I will never forget the day you taught me what love is. You said, love is when you deeply care for someone. And Daddy, you truly loved us, your family, friends and many others. My father was like a father to almost everyone around him. Daddy, you are a legend and we want to carry on the legacy you built and taught us. We wish you were here to see us do it though. It's amazing how you're still teaching us, even though you're not here with all your little clues and hints in your work. We will forever miss your crazy adventures, your pranks, your company, your guidance, your voice, hearing you say your love views and your hugs. I wish you peace, happiness and love. Daddy, it's too hard to say goodbye until we meet again. Love you. Peace. We miss you. My father, Rishi Daniel, was a very hardworking, honest, kind and generous man. He would always take care of his family and friends with great respect and compassion. He was loved and cared for by his family, his friends and his colleagues. He would never turn someone down without a valid reason. He was always there when you needed him within a few phone calls. Rishi had a powerful vision and I greatly respected and appreciated his knowledge that he had shared with us. He would have called me to help make decisions that I thought was too important and valuable for me to decide. But he knew that this was an important lesson for us, his children. He gave me the freedom to make my own decisions and be myself. He wanted to live his life happily and enjoy the little moments in his day-to-day -day life. He would say, if you want to make it happen, don't let anybody stop you. Throughout our highs and lows, we appreciate all the lessons you had taught us. You had my back and I had yours. We understood each other and what we were feeling. You will never be forgotten in time by anyone you have crossed paths with in this world. You have built a legacy that will last forever and I am proud to say that's my father. You have worked hard and long enough to have this retirement even though you won't be with us physically. We love you and I hope you're safe and happy wherever you go. Be safe. Love you. Daddy, you were the most amazing man in our lives. 
we are very grateful to have you as a father and we miss you. I will never forget the lessons you taught me and my sisters by following our dreams and working hard for the things we want in life to, and to be strong and never give up. We will miss going fishing with you and all the fun times we shared together as a family. I will especially miss your smile, your voice, and your hugs. We love you, Daddy. This is on behalf of Sadish. Rishi was a caring man and he used to always be helping somebody. He was like a father to me as he supported and cared for me. He was a man of many lessons. He showed me a better life and taught me if you really want something, get up and look hard until you get it. It's all about my power. He said, if you want something, it's never impossible to accomplish it. He taught me about his perspective, about reality and logic. Our friendly conversations were being missed, especially when you used to always tell me a set of things. I remember the times when I called you uncle out of respect and you would get mad, or when you would always tell me you never find somebody as stupid as you. <laughs> and your favorite line, you ain't good enough for the rich enough. I will always remember when you said to me, you must make yourself happy before you can make other people happy. Mm -hmm. Or the day you told me I was legal. And to never forget that there is no one better than yourself, so be who you are. I cherish these memories and you will be missed. This is on behalf of Robin. Rishi was like a main brother to me over the years. He was my partner in crime when it comes to fishing. He taught me how to drive a boat and many fishing techniques I didn't know about which have enhanced my fishing skills. We share so many wonderful memories and I am happy I got to make some memories with him. He was such a humble, caring and giving person who never looked for anything in return. His good deeds and daunted personality have made me grow fond of him over the years. I would always remember when I organized a fishing charter, he would say to me, I feel like I'm on a vacation. He was a great part of the fishing crew and everyone would truly miss him. Gone too soon but would never be forgotten. He will always be close to my heart until we meet again. Brothers for life, Robin. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, as everybody shared their little moments that they had with Rishi, getting to know Rishi, 
and how they feel. Thank you for the eulogy. And uh, this time we're going to sing another song, Blessed Assurance. Could we stand to do this one, please? Have some internet problems. Sorry. Woo. <laughs> Stand and hold it on here. The breeze. I don't know why all these things happening today. <laughs> internet problem. Breeze. Is it that Rishi saying, "Listen to me. I don't want to go." <laughs> I want to be here. You know, he's always like to be a part of everything that is taking place. So. And before I do um, 
the message. I want to sing a song. I want to sing a song, and this song has been a blessing to me. I think we have mosquito bites in them over there. <laughs> um, yeah. And <laughs> give him a little hard time in the corner here. <laughs> Anyhow, um, this song has been a blessing to me, and I pray it, it had taken me through some tough times in my life. And I want to dedicate this song and let you know that God is the God of the mountain. The same God when you are feeling good is the same God when you're feeling sad. I love that song. That song had taken me through some tough times in my life. And I know that we always feel when we are okay and we are on the mountain tops and we think that, you know, we're feeling happy and everything's going good. We feel happy about that. And we say, yes, you know, there's a God. But when we get down into the valley where we have problems and we have trouble and things are not going as it's supposed to go, we wonder where is God? Is God still there? The song says he's the same God who was on the mountain and the same God in the valley. So no matter what you're going through right now, my friend, he is God and he will always be God. Don't ever forget that. He will always be God. I just wanted to bring a little story about Lazarus and most of you will know this story here. And, uh, um, you know, I like to tell it in a story form, 
rather than reading and talking, I like to bring it in a story form so that you all will, you know, grasp. I'm a very simple preacher. I don't go too much into a lot of things. Depends. But in a situation like this, I want to talk to you about a man who was named, his name was Lazarus. And Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha. They were all good friends. And the Bible tells us that one day, Lazarus got sick. And as Lazarus got sick, they knew they had a good friend. They knew that they had someone who have raised dead before, who have caused the, the leper to be healed, the blind man to receive his sight. They have followed the ministry of Jesus. They knew what Jesus could have done. They knew his purpose on earth. So when their brother got sick, and normally when people get sick, you call the closest people to you. And you will call and say, well, so-and-so not feeling good. So if you could come across or, or, or whisper a prayer or something. And uh, I remember when Daniel got sick a couple of years ago, Kamini called and she said, pray for him because he was in the hospital. And I continued to pray for him. And the church continued to pray for him. And then God brought him back. And he was able to come back and do what he had to do and continue to live his life. And then he got sick again a couple of times. But this time, I wasn't so sure what was going on because I know the entire family wasn't feeling so good. And then I got a call from Samantha saying, they just took daddy to the hospital. So I just called him to let you know. And I said, thank you for letting me know. I like to know what is happening so that when I pray, I can pray intelligently. If you don't know what is happening, you cannot pray intelligently. And she, she explained to me what happened and I said, sure, I'm going to pray. I'm going to put it up on our church chat and that others will be praying also. Now all the prayer that we have done, just as Mary and Martha called Jesus and all the prayer and all the hope and all that they believe that Lazarus as their brother was sick unto death that he wasn't going to die because they knew who Jesus was. Amen? They know who Jesus was because they believe that when Jesus Come, everything is going to be all right. Don't we all feel like that when we get sick or something is happening and, and we have so much confidence in someone and when they come and they reach, we feel, oh my God, I feel good. I see them. In spite of your feeling, it gives you a good feeling, a little bit of strength and a little, something to hold on to. So they call Jesus. And Jesus was so busy doing the Father's work that he did not attend or say, here I was coming and I would leave what I'm doing and come one time. You see, sometimes, my friend, when things are happening in our lives, when things are not going right and we call for the Savior, he might not reach immediately. That did not say that he did not remember Lazarus. He did not know who was Lazarus and who Mary and Martha was to him. He knew. He knew how important they were to him. But I'll tell you something, my friend, that God this evening is saying that you are so important to him. And what is taking place is that we understand that Jesus had a purpose. And his purpose was to fulfill the will of his father. So he carried on what he did. 
what he was doing, and he said to Mary and Martha, he would come. But then, when you are going through your darkness, and you are going through your, your valley experience, uh, you feel sometimes that when you call on people, they should come immediately. Leave what they're doing and come. And that's how Mary and Martha felt. Martha was the one who tell Jesus, hurry, hurry, my brother is sick. Hurry, Jesus. And he told Martha he will be there. But Martha was not the kind of person who had a patience, too much patience. You see, Martha was like, I don't know if she was the eldest one, but when Jesus would visit, she will do the cooking and cleaning, and she will be the busy one taking care of the family. And Mary will be the one who will sit at the feet of Jesus and just listen to Jesus. And she will come and tell Jesus, you know, I am doing so much, and Mary is just sitting there doing nothing. And Jesus said to her, you know, what she's doing is more profitable than what you're doing. So you're so busy doing everything, but is that important to God than spending time at the feet of Jesus? However, as Jesus continued to do his will, the Father's will, eventually he ended up coming to visit. And Martha said to him, you are late. You are late. Why didn't you come before? My brother had died. If only you were here, he would be alive. You see, because she put so much faith in, in Jesus. And she thought that maybe, no matter what is happening, Jesus will take care of Lazarus. So she loses a little bit of faith. And sometimes, my friend, it's okay to feel that way. You know, sometimes people believe because you are Christian that everything will be perfect. And we will be feeling, you know, like we are on cloud nine all the time. I have news for you. We are human beings. We have some good days and we have some bad days. We have days that we don't feel to get off the bed. We have days that we don't feel to go to work. We have days that we don't feel to see nobody. We have days, my friend, different emotions. And this is how God made us. But in it all, they were happy to see Jesus. And you know something? Even though Lazarus was dead, there is no account in the Bible where Mary came out and tell Jesus anything. But Martha spoke. And then he said, O ye of little feet. She has always been a person to complain. You know, we have people in spite of your sick. You know, we have people taking care of people. And when they get sick, sometimes they, some people complain more than other people. They are reality, right? It's a reality. We live, we know that. You know, you get tired when they get sick and you, you get a little grouchy sometime with them and all of that, you know. And she was done into grief because of her brother. So she was just talking to Jesus and expressing herself to Jesus. And Jesus said, where is Lazarus? And she said, well, we put him in the tomb. He's already dead three days. And Jesus did not allow that to defer him for what the master, the, his father, has sent him to do. He went to the grave, my friend. And oh, we wish that he could have raise up Daniel and not allow Daniel to be in this casket now. How good it would have been, Kamani, to have him next to you. Children, I know how you feel. But then Jesus said, he, um, he's, he has a will to perform and he gonna make an example of what the father has sent him to do. And then he stand at the grave and he called forth Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, come forth. The people were amazed. Mary and Martha still did not believe he had been dead for so long. Why and how is he going to come alive? But the Bible says, Lazarus came 
forward. I want to let you know today that we can't call Rishi back to life. He's already gone. He has lived his life. His time on earth is no longer. And I always say, I don't come and preach in the service like this about the person who is in the casket. I try to tell people who are alive today. As number says in the Bible, 21 says, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart to wisdom. Most of us, almost every one of us sometimes take life for granted. We take people for granted. The only time we really feel something and a, and a regret sometimes is when we see them lying in a casket or a coffin. You know, when Jesus called forth Lazarus and he came and he unloosed him, he presented him to Mary and Martha and to the crowd. And the Bible says he just did not do that. But he wanted to show that what he had come for, that God will be glorified in everything that he did. This evening, is it that we are glorifying God in our lives? A question I ask. God is there. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always there for you, my friend. As I said in the valley experience, that's the time we need God. And some people call on the valley experience and they call upon God. And when God takes them into the mountaintops, they forget who was God. They forgot their experience and they move on. Let us not be like that. Let us not be you know, people with short memory of what God has done for us and where he has taken us out of. And if you have been in a valley experience this evening, know that God could take you to that mountain experience. And when you get to that mountain experience, do not forget God. Do not forget God. The end of it is that Mary and Martha, those who were there, they glorify God. It's important to praise God. It is important, my friend, to love God and serve God. Life is given by God. And one day, he's going to call that life to an end to each one of us. What will be your account to God? What will be your account to God? Will you be happy to see God's face? Or will you not want to see God's face because you have not glorified God? I don't care where you come from, from whatever situation you might be in. I want to tell you this evening that we serve God this evening, the lover of your soul. He love you. He love you. And in return, the Bible says, when God made man, all he made man to do was to praise him. And when you wake up in the morning, we cherish life now because of the COVID and all that is happening around us. Some people are very ill. Some people are at the point of death right now as we speak. Some people are breathing the very last breath, the breath that God breathed into mankind and caused us to be a living creature. I want to say to you, cherish the breath that God has given to you. Cherish the life that God has given to you. And glorify God. Rishi has done his part. He has moved on. He has moved on. And we pray right now that God will take charge of his family. And God will bless his family and God will hold them together. Because these are days when they will be waking up and wish to hear his voice as the children says wish that he would make a joke like he would normally do wish that he would bring something for them or tell them something or maybe tell them something just to 
aggravate them because Rishi was like that kind of person to the children just to aggravate them to see. And don't talk about what he so wanted to do to Kamani. But he was that kind of person. Sometimes we do not cherish things like that too much, you know, until we lose it. For those of us who are alive, cherish life and cherish one another. Glorify God in everything. Love God. Serve God. Cherish your partner. Cherish your children. Cherish your family, your neighbors, your friends, your brothers and sisters. Cherish one another. God, that is all God wants you to do, is to love one another just as God has loved us and gave himself for us. Father, we thank you for your blessing. Thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us, dear God, another opportunity to bring forth your word, dear Father, to each one of us who are here. We pray that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish its purpose, dear Father. Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. At this time, before we sing um, our last song, I think we want to do an open forum where we will have those of you who would want to bring greetings and, um, you know, comfort and, um, to the family. Um, we open up for a little bit and then we will sing our last song and then we will conclude the service. Okay, so we open the floor now for those of you who want to come. We don't have much time, so if you have to come, please come quickly. If we don't have anybody, we will move on. I'm sure everybody knows Rishi here. I have to say something about Rishi. <laughs> All right, Brother Gavin. Praise the Lord. Come, Brother Gavin. This is a brother of our church. Mm -hmm. Afternoon, everyone. Um, what could I say? I've known Mr. Daniel. I don't call him Rishi because of the respect I have for him. <laughs> Um, I've known him for a short while, and I have some fun memories. Uh, he took me fishing on two occasions, and in that short period there, I have gotten so close to him, realized the type of man he was. He was a loving husband, a fantastic father. The way I see him talk to his children and the way he, he treats his children and even the little time he spent with me on the boat and the way he, he treats me at all, you know, it was, it was, I had such a great time. So I have fond memories of Mr. Daniel and the comedy and the church. I This is a time I know you're going to be extremely sad and you're going to grieve for a long time to come. You are going to grieve for a long time to come. It's not an easy thing to lose a husband and a father at a young age. Um, but I want to make a promise to you all today. Even though he isn't here physically, I promise you all for the rest of your lives, he will always be with you all. He's going to be with you all right here. You all are always going to remember the times that you all had all the laughter. All the troubles, the little things you used to, <laughs> to annoy yours. <laughs> Later on, when you are much older, you could always come back to times when, you know, Daddy, <laughs> this is something that you would have done. This is something that he did. <laughs> you know, Daddy spoke about this. Even though you can't see it now, Daddy taught me this. You may not understand the reason why he did this now. 20 years from now, is then you're going to realize I now receive what. It is that he meant when he did it when he told me this. And y'all will always have him forever. Even though he isn't here physically anymore. I feel the same way with my mom. At this age, I'm now 59. I lost my mom a good while ago. But I remember all the things that she taught me. And how she prepared me for life. And I know Mr. Daniel was a person like that. So, Carmen, I know you're going to be similar. 
But you have the members of Faith Evangelical, oh, always yes. here for you. Amen. And always will be there for your children. Yes. Anytime you need us, we'll be right here. So, Mr. Daniel was a great man, fun husband, fun father. Yes. And I know where he is now, for the type of person he was. Yes. And that little time I spent with him, he left that in me. So I was so grateful, I'm so grateful for him. Just for those two occasions of that session. Again, so Mr. Dana, rest in peace, and God with you, and to his family. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else would like to come and say something? We have an open forum now. I just want to um, encourage. Um, Kamini and her daughter son. Son, I met Mr. Daniel once in Tobago. I don't know very much about him, but I heard a lot about him. And I want to say to you all, I am a woman of birth. And since I've heard what has been happening here, I've been praying for you. And I will continue to pray for you. Because prayer has power. Prayer moves mountains. Prayer can do miracles in your life. And I will continue to pray for you all and pray that God will give you all the grace and the strength and the courage to carry you. Amen. Anybody else? Okay, come, brother. I guess everybody here knows Rishi very well. I guess there's not much to say about him, but everybody knows everything about him. On behalf of my family, we get very, very well for all of us. It's better for me. I don't know. There's not much to say. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? We've given you an opportunity. and If not, we're going to move on. And <clears throat> All right, we're going to stand and sing our last song. And we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be <clears throat> when we all see jesus we will sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all And shout the victory Onward to the prize before us Soon his beauty will be known. Soon the pearly gates will open We shall tread the streets of gold Oh, when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Amen. <clears throat> I sing it low because I don't want to sing a high, very high, but I want to sing a favorite song of ours, it's Kamini. Um, and I don't know if some of you will know this, but 
we will sing this song because this has been a song in our church that we have sung for many years and I just want to sing this um, to you all. When you hear the music, you will know what it is. we sing and as a family we believe in that song and Rishi has provided a roof over his family head and he had given them a good life he had done his very best he did what he had to do he was truly a good man for his family and I know he will be greatly missed by all of us especially his wife and children I want to encourage you to remember to pray for them and support them in any way you can. Faith Evangelical, I have always been there and I will always be there. Members of the church will always be there. God will always be there, no matter what. Hold on and don't give up. At this time, we're going to have, I would just ask the family to come forward and just stand here, please immediate family, wife and children. This is a family that Rishi has left behind. Not that he wanted to, not that he desired to do it, he never wanted to. Nobody wants to leave their loved ones. But when we have our time, 
And God called. The role is called up yonder. We have to answer the call. Whether we are ready or not. Prepare yourself, my friend. It's not going to get better. Things are going to get worse in this world. Hold on to God. At this time, I just want to pray for the family. Uh, Sister Parvati will come and pray with me um, for this family right now. And I want you to raise your hand towards the front of this family and just lift them in prayer. Lift your hands and raise it. As Sister Parvati, come and pray for this family right now that God will bless and God will keep them. Father. Yes, Lord. We stand in your presence this day, Lord. Yes, Jesus. And we want to say thank you for thank your goodness you. and your mercy. Yes. And your love, dear Father. Mm -hmm. There are times you do not understand things and don't understand why things happen the way they happen, dear yes, God. Lord. But Lord, you know everything, dear God. Yes, Father. Father, this evening I Lift up unto you, Kamini and her two daughters, and Brandon, dear God. Lord, you understand how they feel right now, dear God. Mm -hmm. You understand the pain that they are going through right now. Yes, the sadness that they are going through, dear God. The grief that they are going through right at this time, dear God. Yes, but Lord, your word said when you leave this world, you said you would send a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, to comfort us. Yes. And Father, this evening I pray, dear God, that you will comfort them, dear God. Mm -hmm. Father, help them to know that you are always there. Your word promised that you will never leave us, and you will never forsake us, dear God. Yes, Lord. And Father, I pray this evening, dear God, that you will surround them with your love. love yes. You will keep them under your divine protection, dear God. Your word said you will provide. Yes. And Father, I take hold of that promise yes, this Lord. evening, dear God, yes. that you will guard and keep and protect them. Yes. And you will also provide for them. Yes, Lord. Father, I give you praise and thanks, dear God. Yes. Pour out your spirit upon them right now. Yes. Father, they... They may, may be uh, wishing right now that this should never happen, hmm. but Lord, it did. But Lord, in times like these, we does not understand everything there, God. Yes, Lord. But Father, I have one thing I can say. You promise that you will always be there, mm -hmm. and you will uphold us with your right hand of righteousness. Isaiah 41, 40, 31 said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will strengthen thee. And I will uphold thee with your right hand of righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for that blessed promise, dear God. It is a promise of your word, dear God, that you will be there. In their fear, in their grief, and you will uphold them with your right hand of righteousness. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, for your Lord. word. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You all may be seated. And at this time, we, we will be having the family that we can up. Somebody open the casket, please. We are going to do a viewing of the body, but first of all, we're going to have the family come, they want the children, and I know they have their flowers and stuff to leave for their father. And um, if, uh, let me, as they come, children. Open it, open it and take one. If I could catch a star for you, I swear I'd steal them all tonight. To make your every wish come true, your every dream for all your life. But that's not how the stars.
where heroes come and go. Where God just took the only one I know. So I'll hold you as close as I can. Longing for the day when I see your face again. But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight. Your love lives on inside of me, and I will hold on tight. It's not my place to question, only God knows why. Those of you who had want to come and view the body, now is your time to come and view the body and after this we are going to go for our last rites at the cemetery and we have the address on the pamphlet. So you can come and I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your head. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God.
Of God. 
Of the goodness of God. 